Landscape is a complex term, which makes it rather difficult to define and allows different people to interpret it in different ways. According to the dictionary, the word has two basic meanings. On the one hand, it refers to an area of land, usually but not always in the countryside, together with all its natural features. On the other, it can also refer to a picture of an area of land. The first meaning defines a landscape as being something natural, the second as being a work of art. The famous British art historian Kenneth Clark was using the term in the first of these meanings when, more than 60 years ago, he titled his pioneering study of landscape painting, Landscape into Art. That title assumed a fairly simple relationship between its two key words. Landscape meant some actual countryside, while art was what happened to landscape when it was translated into a painted image by a person with imagination and technical skill. In Clark's title, landscape was just the raw material waiting to be processed by the artist. The process of creating a picture of landscape can, however, be seen in a more complex way than either the dictionary or Clark suggests. In fact, a landscape, whether cultivated or wild, has already been shaped before it becomes the subject of a work of art. Even when we simply look at land and enjoy the beauty of what we see, we are already making interpretations and converting land into landscape in our heads. We select and frame what we see, leaving out some visual information in favor of promoting other features. This is what we do as we look through the camera viewfinder at a countryside scene, and by doing so we are converting that place into an image long before we press the shutter button. Thus, Although we may well follow an impulse to draw or photograph a particular piece of land and call the resulting picture a landscape, it is not the formal making of an artistic record of the scene that has made the land into landscape. The process is in fact twofold, not simply landscape into art, but first land into landscape, and then landscape into art. The question then, of course, arises. On what basis do we select and edit what we see? And why do we mentally frame views of land in the ways that we do? One of the answers is that the process is powerfully, and almost always unconsciously, affected by our previous experiences of landscape pictures. Landscape pictures lead to more landscape pictures. And these are not only paintings of the kind we can see in art galleries, but also the numerous representations of land we see in photographs, in films, on television, or in advertising. Our long experience of such images in the public world helps to create the visual prejudices that shape how we privately respond both to our natural environment and to pictures of that environment. A landscape, then, can be defined as what a viewer has selected from the land, modified according to certain conventional ideas about what makes a good view. It is land organized and reduced to the point where the human eye can comprehend its breadth and depth within one frame or with a single glance. This definition will cover both landscape as a viewer's private interpretation of a piece of land and landscape as a publicly visible picture of a piece of land, which has been created by an artist or a photographer.